When people think of seaplanes, they imagine the huge flying boats which flew the Trans-Pacific routes between the wars. Or they think about the Catalina seaplanes operated by the Allies during World War II. But nobody would imagine that at one time the U.S. Navy nearly deployed supersonic seaplanes. This is the story of the Convair Sea Dart. In the early 1950s, the Navy was transitioning from propeller-driven plane to jets. The Navy already had subsonic straight-wing jets in service, but what they needed were supersonic interceptors. But unlike propeller aircraft, supersonic fighters needed long takeoff rolls, had high approach speeds, and were not very stable or easy to control, which made them difficult to operate from a straight-deck carrier. Instead, the Navy wanted to test whether supersonic seaplanes were a viable alternative thus entered Convair with the XF-2YC Dart. Convair got the contract for two prototypes on January 19, 1951. The Sea Dart was powered by a pair of afterburning J-34 Westinghouse engines. The intakes for these engines were mounted high up on the sides of the fuselage and behind the cockpit to prevent water spray from being sucked in. The hull consisted of multiple watertight compartments to prevent the aircraft from sinking in case of a puncture. Like any water-based aircraft, the Sea Dart's hull was V-shaped. In the water, the dive brakes doubled as water rudder for taxiing. The view from the cockpit was rather poor since a center post obstructed the view. The cockpit canopy consisted out of one piece, and once opened there was no windscreen in front to protect the pilot. Instead of a normal undercarriage, the Delta Dart had a single ski to glide on the water. At one point, the Navy considered the development of a submarine aircraft carrier which would use pressure chambers to store the water jet planes. However, these plans never reached further than the napkin stage. On April 9, 1953, the first prototype made its official maiden flight in the San Diego Bay. Immediately, some issues reared their head with the design of the aircraft. The engines were underpowered, and the hydro skis created violent vibrations during takeoff and landing. The skis and landing legs were improved yet supersonic speed was not attainable, partially because the hull of the aircraft was not designed according the area rule, causing higher transonic drag. The second prototype was cancelled. Instead, four service test aircraft were ordered and built. These service aircraft received a different engines in the form of two J-46 Westinghouse afterburning turbojets, but even those performed below expectations. Despite underwhelming engines on August 3rd, 1954, the Convair test pilot Charles Richborg managed to break the sound barrier in a shallow dive. Thus, the Sea Dart became the first and only supersonic seaplane. But by that time, the Navy was already losing interest in the concept. New carriers were designed with angled flight decks and powerful steam catapults, which were necessary to operate supersonic fighters from its decks. On November 4, 1954, the second test Sea Dart disintegrated in mid air during a presentation for naval officers. Cause of the accident was the inadvertently exceeding of the aircraft's limitations be the test pilot who sadly lost his life in the accident. With no more interest in the project and after witnessing the crash, the Navy canceled the program. Nowadays, the three remaining service sea darts are on display in Musea while the lone prototype is awaiting restoration. Thank you for watching. If you wish you can support the channel by subscribing or leaving a like. This link will bring you to another failed Navy fighter, but unlike the Sea Dart this one served at least on a carrier.